Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Robert Cummings, Anne Blythe, Howard De Silva, and Lee J. Cobb in Great Expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater inaugurates its 14th year on the air. And I'd like to thank you of the listening audience, as well as the motion picture studios and stars, for making our past 13 years so happy and successful. And in celebration we bring you tonight one of the greatest English classics ever filmed, J. Arthur Rank's screen epic, Great Expectations. Starred in our cast are four of Hollywood's favorite players, Robert Cummings, Anne Blythe, Howard De Silva, and Lee J. Cobb. Any anniversary is a time for taking stock of the past, and we note with particular pride the ever-growing popularity of Lux Flakes. During the lifetime of this theater and for years before, they've entered more and more American homes to become a household word for cleanliness, discrimination, and good taste. And I'm sure that you who put your faith in Lux Flakes have been happily rewarded. On to tonight's play, David Lean's production of Great Expectations, starring Robert Cummings as Pip, Anne Blythe as Estella, Howard De Silva as Jaggers, and Lee J. Cobb as Magwitch. This dark and tangled narrative has its beginning in the year 1821. I was 12 years of age, living in the south of England with my sister and her husband. Late one gusty autumn afternoon, I visited the village churchyard where my mother and father are buried. And suddenly, from behind one of the tombstones... <laughs> Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat. He was looming over me, huge and horrible, his great wrists shackled in chains, an escaped convict. Tell us your name. Quick. Pip. Pip, sir. You're lying. That's no name. Oh, it is, sir. Pip, it really is. But they call me Pip. Show us where you live. Three miles, sir. Across the marshes. Where's your father? Here, sir. This is his grave. Yeah. Your mother? Here, too, sir. Well, who do you live with? Supposing you're kindly let live, which I ain't made up my mind about as yet. With my sister, sir, Miss Joe Godry, wife of Joe Godry, the blacksmith. Uh, blacksmith, eh? Know what a file looks like? A file? Yes, sir. You know what Whittles is? Yes, sir. Food, sir. You get me a file and you get me Whittles. I'll have your heart and liver out. I I'll try, sir. You'll bring them Whittles and that file to me in this churchyard tomorrow morning, at daylight. Yes, sir. And never a word of having seen such a person as me. Yes, sir. There's another man hid here. With me, he has a secret way of getting at a boy and tearing him wide open. Say, heaven strike you dead if you breathe a word. Heaven strike me dead if I breathe a word. Now, get you home. As I expected, my sister had a welcome for me when I returned. But I've only been to the churchyard, Mrs. Joe. You can stop beating him. He's had enough. I ask no opinion of you. No, Papa. And you too, you young devil. Oh, sit down, boy. Joe? That noise. What was that? Was that great guns, Joe? Oh, lad, escaped convicts, two of them, from the prison ships across the marshes and the river. I wonder who's put in prison ships and why they're put in prison ships. People who murder Pip and forge and rob. And they always start by asking too many questions. Now you clean your plate and get off to bed. <laughs> What sleep I had that night was plagued with the dreadful vision of the convict waiting for me in the churchyard. I was up long before dawn. Country, I stole a portament for your shop fire. I ran most of the way. It gave me less time to think. I'm here, sir. You brought none with you? No, sir. This is for you, sir. A pork pie and Joe's brandy. Give it here. Uh, I, I think you have the jewels, sir. Ma'am, how much of your opinion, boy? The food now. The food. Are you starved, sir? Mm. Mm. I, I'm glad to see you enjoy it, sir. Uh, thank you, boy. Thank you, I do. Aren't you going to leave any for him? Him? Your friend, the other man. I didn't say he was a friend of mine. Anyway, he's gone. 
Now, give us the file, boy. If there isn't anything else, may I please go home now? Oh, uh, yeah. Go home. I'm beholden to you. Thank you, boy. Thank you. All day long, the mounted soldiers swarmed over the marshes, searching for the convicts. They were captured, both of them. On the way back to the prison ship, the sergeant's horse lost a shoe, so they stopped at Joe's blacksmith shop. And with them was a convict. I had helped. So you caught them both, sergeant. What happened to the other one? The corporal stuck him on the head. We'd not have got this one at all. If it wasn't for the help that somebody gave us. Hey, my witch, is that right now? That's right enough. What are you looking at the boy for? No reason. Sergeant, I wish to say something respecting this here escape. You do, eh? I'll say it. You may prevent some persons from suffering suspicions. Now that I know it was my ship might turn me in. Well? I stole some food from this blacksmith's house last night. You were in my house last night? Stole a dram of liquor and a pork pie. The pork pie? I miss a tore the house down looking for it. Uh, I'm sorry to say I ate your pie. Oh, you're welcome to it as ever it were mine. We wouldn't want you to starve to death, would us, Pip? No, Joe, no. Get back to your forge, you blacksmith. Cut the leg. It was a year later when an adventure of quite another sort befell me. My great uncle Pumblechook came to the house on a very mysterious errand. That's all I know, Mrs. Joe. Miss Eversham sent word that she wants the boy to call on her. Well, oh. well, you hear that, boy? Yes, ma'am. But uncle, it don't make sense. What do you want him for in that great old house? Pip, do you know who Miss Aversham is? The strange lady who nobody sees. Oh, and she's mad. Ain't she, Mrs. Joe? Well, she may be mad, but she's rich enough to make the boy's fortune. The message says she wants Pip to come to her house and play. Then he'd better go and play or I'll work him good. Get to the pump, boy. Get to the pump and scrub till you shine. Here's the fine big gate, Grand Nevy. So ring the bell, ring it, boy. Name? Pumble Chook. Quite right. She's coming. It's a girl. First girl you've ever seen, is it? No, sir. Then restrain your observation, sir, till invited. This is Pip, young lady. So this is Pip, is it? Come, Pip. Not you. Only him. Hey? Not me. Go away. Come along, boy. The house is like nothing I've ever seen before or since with a musty smell and dust and cobwebs everywhere, as if the house had... had died. Not a ray of sunlight, only the glimmer of the candle in the hand of the little girl and the ring of our footsteps on the stone. This door, boy, over here. Uh, after you, miss. Don't be silly. I'm not going in. Who is it? Who's there? Pip, ma'am. Mr. Bumblejuke's boy, come to play. Let me look at you. Well, you aren't afraid of a woman who has never seen the sun since before you were born? No, Miss Havisham. Look at my hand. What do I touch when I put my hand here? Your heart. Broken. My broken heart. Sometimes I have sick fancies, boy. And I've had a fancy that I would like to see someone play. Well, play, play. Estella, come here. Play with this boy. With him? A common neighboring boy? Look at his boots. You can break his heart, Estella. Boy, play cards with her. Here, cards. Deal the cards, boy. Yes, miss. What court can? I'm sorry, miss. I... Now look what you've done. You've dropped the cards. Excuse me, I'll pick them up. You stupid, clumsy laboring boy. She has many hard things to say of you, Pip. Have you nothing to say of her? I think she is very insulting. Anything else? I think she is very pretty. Anything else? I think I should like to go home now. And never see her again, even though she's so pretty? I'm not sure that I shouldn't like to see her again, but I think I should like to go home now. You shall go home in time. Play the game out. Thereafter, in accordance with Miss Havisham's wishes, I made innumerable visits to the great house, each time with a cruel, tormenting smile 
Estella would meet me and take me to this cabin. Well, boy? Well, miss? Am I pretty today? Yes, I think you are very pretty. Am I insulting? Not so much as Tuesday, miss. Not so much so. Take that, you coarse little monster. What do you think of me now? I won't tell you. Why don't you cry again, you little wretch? You cried that first day, didn't you? I saw you. You went through the gate crying. And she'll never cry because of you again. Open the door. Today she's in there. This was one of the many rooms I had never before entered. In the candlelight, I saw an immense table with chairs about and laden with dishes and fine silver. But upon everything hung the same pall of dirt and decay. And seated at the head of the table was Miss Havisham. Do you know what that is in the center of the table? No, ma'am. A wedding cake. My wedding cake, Pip. Long before you were born, it was placed there. It and I have worn away together. The mice have gnawed at it, Pip. But sharper teeth have gnawed at me. There. There, boy. Run along now. Run along. You'll find Estella in the garden. Estella was not in the garden. A boy was there, a stranger, stripped to the waist and holding up his fists. He said Estella had sent for him to fight me and teach me manners. So I fought with him and cut his eye and set his nose to bleeding. <laughs> he was very gracious about it. Well, you've won all right. Fight's over. Can't I help you? I, I really didn't mean... No, thanks. I'm tipped up. Can't understand how you did it, though. You're leaving? Oh, yes. No point in staying now, is that? Well, good afternoon, then. Same to you. Boy. Where are you? Over here. And don't ask. When I call you, come. Yes, miss. You whipped the village, boy. I had no wish to fight at all. But you whipped him. So you may kiss me. Thank you. Now go home. It's no use. You'll never become a gentleman. I would never become a gentleman any more than I could give up running to Miss Havisham every time she gave me leave to do so. By now, I had entered upon the regular occupation of pushing Miss Havisham from room to room in a chair while she questioned me as to what books I had read and what I was going to be. Estella was always hovering about, but never again did she tell me I might kiss her. I hate you, boy. I hate you. My admiration for her knew no bounds, and scarcely a night went by without my falling asleep with the image of a lovely face before me. And then came a day when I went to Havisham House with slow feet and a heavy heart. I can't come to see you anymore, Miss Havisham. I've heard the news, Pip. Your sister has died. Yes. She treated you miserably. You'll do better without her. But I have to help Joe now, Miss Havisham, about the cottage and at the forge. An apprentice blacksmith? You? Yes, Miss Havisham. Since this is your last visit, here, some golden sovereigns. Thank you. You've earned them well. Thank you. Estella, show the boy out. Goodbye, Miss Havish. I heard what you told her. You had better say goodbye to me because I'm going away, too. Going away? To France to be educated. France? Well, aren't you sorry? Going? Yes, Estella. I'm very sorry. Well, well, who'll be here? A boy, Mr. Jaggers. A boy, eh? From the neighborhood? Yes, sir. Miss Havisham sent for me, sir. Well, behave yourself, then. <coughs> I'm a large experience of boys, and you're a bad lot of fellows, all of you. Miss, I shall talk to you about your passage to France. I'll be right there, Jaggers. I wish I knew when you were coming back, Della. And I wish... Well, what do you wish? I wish I could kiss you goodbye. Try us and see what happens. Thank you. <laughs> My word will, by the blacksmith began. I was happy enough, especially when Joe brought Biddy into us as the new Mrs. Joe, a trusted friend of both and a blessing on the household. In the sixth of my apprenticeship, I saw Mr. Jaggers again, cottage asking to see Joe and me alone. So, so you're the blacksmith, eh? By name, uh, Joe or Joe Gargery? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you just commonly known as Pip? Uh, I'm Pip, sir. Oh, so you're Pip, are you? My name is Jaggers. I'm a lawyer in London. You better, you better close that door. Uh, yeah. Now, Joseph Gargery, I'm the bearer of an... I relieve you of this young fellow. You would not object to cancelling his apprenticeship for... You would, uh, you would want nothing for so doing? 
Oh, heaven forbid that I should want anything for not stack Pip's way. He's a fine, good lad, sir. Oh, very well, and very well. I come now to the young fellow himself. To him I say, he has great expectations. I am instructed from him that he will come into a, a handsome property. Pip! Oh, wait, oh, wait. Further, it is the desire of the present possessor that he shall be immediately removed from his present sphere and brought up as befits a young gentleman, and that he ought to have a name of Pip. If you have any objection, kindly mention it now. I, I, I have no objection. I should think not indeed. Further, Mr. Pip, you are to the name of the person who is your benefactor. It's to remain a secret until the person chooses to reveal it. Yes, sir. If you have any suspicion as to who that person might be, keep within your own breast, sir. Well, I have no objection. Now then, kindly consider me your guardian. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, let me tell you, I'm, I'm quite well paid for my services, otherwise I shouldn't have them. I shall arrange for you to come to London in two weeks. Some new clothes here, sir, are 20 guineas. Well, well, Joseph Gard's dumbfounded. Sir, I am. Thank you, Mr. Gardry. Good night, Mr. Pip. And since I stopped for tomorrow, Miss Havisham, I, I thought you would kindly not mind my taking leave. Well, Pip. Well, I must say, your clothes are quite handsome. Oh, Miss Havisham, I'm into wonderful good fortune since I last saw you. I have seen Mr. Pip. I have heard all about it. Have you have you had any news from Estella? Oh, yes. Tear than ever, I dare say, and admire to see her. You, too, have a promise. Be good and deserve it. Miss Havisham. Oh, thank you. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye, Betty. God bless you, dead old Pip. God bless you. Hey, boy, take good care. One day I'll come and see him, Pip. What larks, eh? Well, goodbye. Oh, Joe. Fine, darling. Who could it be, Joe? Not what he had over there, darling. Just wave to a young gentleman. A young gentleman's expectations. <laughs> Act two of Universal International's release, Great Patience, starring Robert Cummings as Pip as Estella, Howard the Silver as Jaggers, Jay Cobb as Magwitch. <laughs> London, the wonder of London, and I was a part of it now. Upon my arrival, I went to the offices of Mr. Jack. So, so you've arrived safely, Mr. Pip. Settle you. Wemmick, bring the file on Mr. Pip. You are, you are scrutinizing Pip. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Those claim men on the war, they're death men, deceased clients. I've had the honor, sir, distinguished criminals of the generation. Yes, sir. Mr. Oh, thank you. Mr. Pip, Wemmick here will conduct you to... You will share rooms there with a Mr. Herbert Pocket. Sir. Mr. Pocket will assist in your acquaintance and the manners of love. Take it that is agreeable? Oh, indeed, sir. Next day, your allowance will be 250 pounds per annum. A very handsome sum of money, too, I think. Oh, undoubtedly, Mr. Of you'll go wrong somehow, but that being neither fault nor affair of mine, why spell it, eh? Goodbye, then, Mr. Pitt, and good luck. My rooms in Barnard's Inn were most comfortable, and the young man I shared them with, Herbert Pocket, most amiable. After supper that night, we suddenly found ourselves... Uh, what? Well, you're the boy. No, no, you're the boy. <laughs> the boy who knocked me down in Miss Havisham's garden. Well, uh, someplace before. Well, then, instead of new friends, we're old friends. Well, if Miss Havisham had taken a liking to me instead of being provided for, <laughs> I might even be engaged to a... Herbert, uh, who... Well, Miss Havisham's ward. Brought up by Miss Revenge on all the male sex. Reek Revenge? Friends, Pip, I thought you knew. Knew what? <laughs> well, anyway, some 20 years ago, Miss Havisham felt pat a stranger. A marriage was arranged, the wedding date was set, the marriage arrived, but not the bridegroom. And bade a farewell. Miss Havisham fell immediately ill, but <laughs> if ever she did, she laid the waste as you've seen it, and has never since looked upon the light of day. Uh, when did she adopt Estella? I don't know. Much about Estella as I do. If I learned little from Herbert about Estella, I feel about the art of being a useless young gentleman. They, Mr. Jaggers, my guardian, stand for me. Sit down. Sit down, Mr. Pitt. Now then, what do you say, Tom? At the rate of, Mr. Jaggers? I, I, I'm afraid I'm not able to answer that. I thought... Well, I've asked you a question. Have you a question to ask of me? Uh, it'd be a great relief to ask you several questions, Mr. Jaggers, if it, 
Ask one. Uh, is Factor to be made known to me today? No, ask me another. Well, I, I was just wondering if I had to receive. <laughs> yes. yes, I thought we should come to that. Yes, sir. Mr. Pitt, you've been spending pretty freely of late. And I I'm afraid I must say yes, sir. You know you must. Yes, sir. Wemmick, uh, hand Mr. Pitt that piece of paper. Say what is it, Mr. Pitt? It's a banknote. A banknote for 100 pounds. And at the rate of that handsome sum per rate, you are to live until your benefactor appears. Will it still be years hence, Mr. Jaggers? I... Good afternoon, Mr. Pitt. Still, the mystery of my benefactor persists deep as ever, though softened, admittedly, by the doubling of my income. After that, Joe Gargery wrote me a letter. He was come. Of a sudden, I realized I was ashamed of Joe. In... I had succeeded only in becoming a snob. None of it of all the so is he who swindles himself. Look, Pip, I, I've been here all day, sir, and... Oh, uh, Joe, Miss, uh, and you've treated me fine, sir. A long year, I wouldn't have come except Miss Aversham. Would you tell Mr. Pip, she says, that I wish to see him fire to him? Well, I, I've now... Oh, well, you're going, Joe? Oh, Pip, old chap, you were figures to be seen together in London. I'm wrong. Well, you may stay the night if you wish. No, no. Go ahead, old Pip, old chap. God bless you. Presented myself once again at Havisham House. Come in, Pip. How good to see you. Well, have you no eyes but for me? Estella. Oh, what a wonderful surprise and pleasure. You will both have a each other. Go out into the garden. Both. And this is where you had the fiber pocket. <laughs> I enjoyed that battle. Didn't very much. Did I? Don't you remember? No, no, I don't. Do you remember the first time... I came here time you made me cry. I made you cry? I remember. You meant nothing to me. Why should I remember? I realize, Pip, that I have no heart. Perhaps that's why I'm No one looking at you could believe that, Estella. No. If we are to be thrown together, you would better believe that at once. Believe it. At any rate, it's said. So don't expect too much. Come, Pip. We'll walk once more around. <laughs> Graceful groom. Do you admire Estella? Must who sees her, Miss Havisham. She is going to London. I shall be the happiest man there. Love her. Love you, love her. If she tears your heart, love her. I made her to be... <coughs> oh, oh, Mr. Jaggers. Madam, Mr. Pitt? What are you doing here? I wished me to see Estella. Oh? Huh? Oh, yeah, dear. A very fine young lady. That I called briefly upon Joe and Biddy and returned to London. It was my unbounded pleasure to extend my arm to Estella, Sally. We sat and talked in a nearby coffee house. You mean you're not staying here in London? I mean that I shall be staying in Richmond. I'm only ten miles from here. But why Richmond? I'm going to live with a lady there who has the power of showing me to people and... Oh, you'll have a gay time, Estella. It is a part of Miss Havisham's... But I cannot take great pleasure, Pip, in events I do not. But I'll try to be beautiful and gay and obedient. Will always be a part of Miss Havisham's plan. Thrive with Mr. Pocket. Estella, I ask you, will you all? Do you thrive with Mr. Pocket? At least it's yes. As pleasant as Estella, so near London, I was able to see her often in the months that followed. One of many admirers. One winter's night, Estella. I'm sorry, now I've promised the poker to Mr. Drummond. Take his eyes off you. Look at him. <laughs> Is there anything to look at? That's a question I wanted to ask you for weeks, hovering over you. All sorts of ugly creatures. Can the candle help you? Oh, it makes me red in looks and smiles, such as you never give me. Deceive and entrap you. Do you deceive and entrap me? Others, too. All of them but you. I went back to London. Hubbard had not yet come home. The door. And instead, an old man, his long white hair and his black coat dripping with the rain. Uh, Pip? I am Mr. Pip, sir. Yeah. I'd like to sit down first. It's disappointing to a man after having... What do you mean? Uh, is there... Why do you ask that? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're a game in Pip. I'm glad you've grown here. Look at me. How, how do I know who you... Oh, God. The convict I gave food to. I didn't know, Pip. 
And I never forgot. Well, there was no need for you to come here to thank me. I want to see you again. If I spoke harshly to you just now, I'm, I'm sorry. In living. <laughs> I've been a sheep farmer. Far away. You've done very well. I have done wonderful well, convict. I'm glad. Yes, I am. You've done well, too. Eh? May I make so bold as to ask... Well, how? Yes. Well, I've been chosen to... May I ask what property? May I ask whose property? I don't... Could I make a guess, I wonder, at your income? Say, uh, 500 pounds. Your guardian, could it be he's a lawyer, Pip? For that lawyer's name now. Would it be, um... How, how do you know that? As to the employer of that... Begins with J and might be Jagger. It's you. Yes, Pip. It's me. Give me your hand, Pip. Let me... I swore that time, sure as ever I'd escape again. That guinea should go to you. Hunt a dog, what you kept life in. Got his head... Could make a gentleman. <laughs> and... Did you ever think it might be me? No, never. Uh, no one else, perhaps? No one else, dear boy. Single-handed father, Pip. Me. Mr. Pip, is it? Mr. Talk to you, Mr. Jaggers. Uh, alone. Oh? Sir. Get out. I said... I'll get out. Who? I've never seen her here before. She's been here before. For years, Mr. Pip. I once saved her from the hangman, and now she cleans... Mr. Jaggers, I want to assure myself that what I have been told... Or, uh, informed. Told would imply to have verbal communication with a man, for example, in, in New South Wales. Informed, then. I have been informed by a person named... that he is the benefactor so long unknown to... The... Well, wh wherever he is, I have always supposed it was Miss Havisham. Why? Is that a particle of evidence, Pip? Anything on evidence? Will you have nothing more to say? I will say this. I think you should know that I communicated with a Mr. Abel Magwood, reminding him that if he should ever set foot again in this country, he would... Take a look out that window, Pip. What is occurring in the prison yard? It's horrible. They're preparing to hang... Eight, I believe, this morning. Happens that his enemies here would not hesitate to inform an escaped convict. There is a... I, I see. But no doubt he has been guided to Wales. But if Mr. Magwood were in this country, out of this country at once, would he not? If he were here? Yes. Yes, at once. Mm, must be done. Good day, Mr. Jaggers. There are AMX. How about convenient traffic and weather for every six with all Adam Red Wolf direct from the Pacific Exchange? 15 and 45 past the hour. Or such CBS Musgood, Dave Bronx, Dan Rather reporting. And CBS Joy Our Entertainment News with Sam Rubin and Tom Hatton. Reports from places where news is breaking or hearings. And just maybe it's the nightly drama hour. Whatever you're, they're all right here at this 1070 spot on your AM dial. In your car or just out and about, you can always do your world. Thanks for listening and for being part of the radio station in Southern California. Now to William Keeley, Act Three of Robert Cummings as Pip, and Blythe as Estella Jaggers, and Lee J. Cobb as Magwitch. I knew my benefactor. I knew he was now risking his life, but I had one course to follow. Somehow I must get Abe's side as long as he lived, with one only leaving him to care for Mr. Magwitch. I saw to Stella. We have company, Miss Havisham. Look. And what brings you here, Mr. Pip? So good. My benefactor is Miss Havisham. I am as unhappy as you could have wished me to be. Well, who is he? When Mr. Jaggers... Mr. Jaggers had nothing to do with lawyer, and the lawyer of your patron is Cohen. Yes, I led you on. Was that kind? That I should be kind. I would have spoken sooner, Stella, as for one another. I felt I could not tell you of my real views for yourself. But now that I am going away, I loved you, Estella. Loved you since I first came to this house. You love me, but you would not be warned. Is it true, then, you? Quite true. And that you encourage him? True. Oh, you cannot fling yourself at such a man. Should I fling myself once that I bring nothing to you? But you can't love him, Estella. Marry him, Pip. Don't be afraid of my being... Here. Here is my hand. You'll get me out of your thoughts in a week. 
Let her go, Pip. What have I done? House when a frightful scream set me rushing back. I heard a window shout, terrified face of Miss Havisham as the fire enveloped her. I dashed to the room and smothered the flames. A falling candle must have started the fire. Miss Havisham was dead. But I returned to London. Yes. I, I, I had you come to my house. Things fair in Barnard's Inn. Oh, well, why do you ask? Because of a, of a certain convict knows of his watch. I, I, I also hear that you are being watched. Might be watched again. So I advised a certain Mr. Herbert Park while you were out of the way. Where are they? <laughs> Mr. Magwitch and our faithful friend Herbert Pocket in an obscure lodging house on the Thames River. If only that we'd be safe here for a while. Now don't fret over me, dear boy. Jagger spoke to me of an enemy. Do you know... The same man I told you of in the churchyard. He turned and he'd do it again to see me hanged. But to make me leave my boy. You won't have to leave me. With me? You'd come with me? Oh, you're a game and pip. Boys turned out to be. Twice a week, a packet boat left Gray's End Pier. One watched us, he'd be at that pier. We had to find some river was a buoy. Here we observed the boat would always occasion to take on passengers. That was where daily Herbert and I went rowing in the river, becoming familiar figures to last the day came that we'd waited for. But it was in heavy rain. Dick, How does it look from the window, Pip? Well, black as ever. See, it swamp us before we get... What is it, Bob? on horseback. They're looking at this house. Police? I, I can't say. I think so. going now. They're walking their horses. This way? Can't be too sure of themselves, or they go to gallop. Set ready. We're rowing out this morning. The storm stopped, Pip. Our luck's with it. Louis, we'll be all right. Row, Pip. Right. Something, Mr. Magwitch. What, dear boy? What I'd more matter. Why have you done so much for me? Miss Pip, little girl. What? what happened to her? I don't know. Shivering marshes. A boy was... That boy took the place of the child he had lost. Straight ahead. We've made it. We've... There's another boat holder. Miss Pip. Who could it be? We'll wait to find out. Swing around. Oh, no, oh, hey. Stop in the name of the king. Convict there. I call upon him to surrender. Bank, Herbert. We can still lose them. Stop. There were four men at the oars of the door on us. And then through the fog, we heard the engines of the packet boat. There was but one desperate chance to take. Row straight from down, would rest their oars. But if they too heard the ship, ten feet from us when the packet boat leaped from the mist and crushed the boat. <laughs> what happened in that next moment? Oh, Mr. Magwitch, old as he was, swimming toward a figure who had each other's throats. And then the stranger, screaming as the great one into the churning waters. The next I knew, Mr. Magwitch was lying on the deck. They're taking us back. Myself for this. I'm all right. Boy. And took my chance. Oh, Jack. Go off all right. <coughs> Forward. Mr. Jaggers. The law is the law, Mr. Abel Magwitch. The sentence of the court is execution. And there, hanged by the neck. I've just come from the warden after tomorrow. There's nothing we can do. Nothing. The man is, is quite ill, Pitt. Yes, I know. But his fortune, that becomes the claim of the crown. The money... It might have been different, but it is not different. The money might go to the child? Mr. Jaggers, I know there was. And what is more... Sit down. I'm going to put a case to you. The case... Won't make. Go on. Now put the case that this woman lady, who is anxious to adopt a little girl. But you understand? I understand, but I can hardly believe it. Observe who comes. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, some fresh water in the basin. Well, Pip? I'm in my right mind. If that woman you call Molly, advisor you mentioned, will have a lot to answer for. Now, often seen children tried at the criminal bar. Whipped and cast out. And growing up to be hanged. But the case, pretty little child of all that miserable heap that could be saved. Carefully. I do, Mr. Jaggers. He did right. Does Estella not know? She must never be told. Well, as to claim use his own judgment, which he is in the process of arriving at. Meanwhile, you will find the child's father in the prison. And... Dear boy, 
something that somehow I knew that you would. God bless you, Pippet, and me. And what you put along me since I was under the sun, Sean, that's the best of all. I don't complain of none. I have something to say to you. Can you... Uh, you had a child once whom you... She's a lady now and very beautiful. Pip, you're out. Oh, be merciful. Abel Magwitch died in my arms. Was then suddenly finding the room spinning before my eyes. When my senses returned, Marjorie was smiling over me. You're better, Pep, your favorite. It, it, it is you, Joe. I, I'm in your house, Joe. Three weeks ago, he brought you home, dear old Pep, old chap. Betty. That's the way I turned from you. Oh, you brave. Come what may. As soon you'll be well again. <laughs> Betty. Right here. The best husband in the world, Betty. And Joe. Pep, old chap, which I know. One day you'll marry. You still fret for her. I think of her. But that poor... I knew as I said these words that I intended to visit. And when that day came, I walked through the years gone by. What day? Sometimes I have six hundred days. Don't go, the boy. A coarse, common laboring boy. I hate you. <laughs> I opened the door of Miss Havisham's room. Yeah. Miss Havisham sitting in her chair. Estella, my husband. I have no heard. I, I've been this. I've heard nothing. Bentley Drummer, who my parents were, he. Well, Pip. Right. I have no wish to laugh, Estella. I know, and I shall live here, away from the world and all. Have you been here? I don't know. You must leave and live here, Estella. This is the house where I grew up. It's part of me. It's gone from both of us. She's not gone. She's still here in this very... Miss Havisham, I have come back to let the sunlight in. From the drain. <laughs> there is sunshine in your home again, Miss Havisham. Estella. <laughs> oh, my darling. I'm afraid. Look at me. We will stop. Come with me, Estella. Out into the sunlight. <laughs> Lux Flake, join me in inviting you to be with us at Gayo Theatre, presents Robert Montgomery, Lloyd Nolan, in 13 Rue Madeleine. This is William Moore from Hollywood.